Hello, I'm John Avenson. Today I'm talking about smart homes. What's the potential and what's the future? Pictured is my house. All the windows are facing south. The south, as you can see, will collect the winter sun. The sun is, uh, warmth is very powerful. In the summer, the sun goes up over the roof and doesn't come in any of those south windows. The middle bottom picture shows the sun's intense brightness during December 21st. In the lower right corner is the Educational Center at National Renewable Energy Labs here in Golden, Colorado. We're going to cover the history and evolution since the 1950s a list of data inputs for a smart house, which enables triggered actions and events, a few fun videos, artificial intelligence, and merging technologies, and some recommended standards and actions that should happen. We're going to cover different sensors, under the sink hot water pump, temperature monitoring cameras, energy monitoring, PV output, Excel history, that's my power company, the artificial intelligence uh, pioneers, the tour of the American Solar Energy Green Homes once a year. Uh, so smart homes, uh, we live in a society exquisitely dependent on science and technology in which Hardly anyone knows anything about science and technology. This is a famous quote from Carl Sagan. In the late 1800s, the modern home emerged with the introduction of the thermostat. This is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, heating and cooling to make us humans comfortable makes up for the deficiencies of the building envelope. Uh, and so far, most of the construction companies around the world are building construction based on intuition, prior experience and tradition, and improvisation, rather than based on instrument-provided data and technology to make a permanent uh, uh, energy-efficient house. The fix is passive house building codes with the Department of Energy and uh, going towards real building science from the data collection and analysis. In the future, we'll have the monitoring of everything artificial intelligence. This could quickly evolve our current understanding of building science with improved health, productivity, reduced impact on Mother Nature, and the improved coefficients of performance of all appliances. <clears throat> In the 1950s, we were filled with a lot of science fiction uh, movies and novels, and we actually had the construction of these in some of homes. My uncle's home had one of these in their master bedroom. It shows buttons for controlling the lights in the entire house. These buttons would light up for any lights that were on. And uh, you could do control of humidity and whether the lawn needed uh, watering or not. This is my version of that same thing in uh, since 2004. This monitor is presented to you at the, as you come in the front door. In addition to the home environment, it was driven by Hollywood. We had the invention of the Cinerama, a very wide screen with surround sound in large theaters. The screen was three to four stories high. Uh, in the 1960s, we had inspiration from the Jetsons cartoon, Star Trek, and 2001 Space Odyssey with artificial intelligence computer named HAL. 
in the 1977-78, President Carter pledged financial support for Solar Energy Research Institute located here in Golden, Colorado. It was short for SARI, now called NREL, National Renewable Energy Labs. Their first assignment was to collect 300 builders and architects from the state of Colorado, give them seminars of how to build energy efficient homes and mass produce them, and the top dozen of those who did the best job of learning from these seminars were going to be placed on the first ever tour of passive solar tour of green homes. This took place in February, March of 81. There was a map on the front page of our two newspapers in Denver from Boulder to Aurora, a dozen homes. My house is number six here located in Westminster. In the 1980s, we had more advances. Uh, we had Dolby Sound and we had IMAX theaters, which this inspired people to want home theaters in their houses. We had the introduction of the IBM PC and the Apple Mac. Um, but to have home theaters, you needed automated shades and lights. Uh, in Popular Science Magazine featured Bill Gates' home in Seattle. It had over 60 miles of X10 remote control wiring. At the same time in the corporation, we had the uh, wiring of Cat3 cables to our, all our desktops and with monitors on our desktops going to uh, corporate mainframe computers. In 1989, as a result, was the formation of CEDIA, Custom Electronic and Design Installation Association. They formed the beginnings of standards and training for technicians moving home theater from a hobby to a legitimate industry. The CEDIA International Conference is held quite often in Denver. Uh, the conversations that happen there are from the factory reps they say, tell your customers this, your salesman this. And then when you, uh, that's a precursor to the Consumer Electronics Show, which is held in January in Las Vegas. Uh, in the future, we need to integrate all of these Internet of Things into a, of our appliances into building standards. Examples are fresh air quality, environmental home monitors, In the 1990s, we had the introduction of Windows 95, which brought us very reasonably priced home computers. It had lots of interfaces for inputs and outputs, printers, etc., cetera, uh, the USB cable. Uh, people were starting to get their homes wired for copper Ethernet cables. In 9899 was the introduction of Zigbee and Z-Wave standards which were wireless ways to control endpoints rather than the old X10 wiring of Bill Gates' house. Uh, these PCs enabled uh, home control programs. Some famous ones were Control 4, Home Seer, and D-Link. These were featured at the CEDIA uh, conventions. And these were all based on triggers and actions, if this, then that scripts. In the 2000s, these, all these uh, standards were evolving with better speed and uh, sensitivity. The uh, speed of CAT cables increased, CAT 6, CAT 7, CAT 8. Uh, we had lots more new uh, home hub computers opening uh, to the market, and Zigbee and Z-Wave uh, were being incorporated as a matter of uh, normal products. In 2004 to present, I got my own dream home with the home theater. Uh, at the time, I was, Home Seer was using the Microsoft voice recognition, and I could say, Rex, turn on movie, and it would turn on the subwoofers and the projector and the lights. Uh, it was so exciting. On my f first attempt at this, however, I have a funny story. 
uh, I named my home computer as the Hollywood computer. And the first thing I did was put on a science fiction, my favorite uh, movie subjects. And uh, in this first story, a lady cop comes running in the room and she says, computer. And my computer says, yes. And she says, turn everything off. And so my whole home theater went off. So uh, um, that night I went to bed uh, thinking about all my relatives and uh, pets that might come in the house. And the next morning, the Hollywood computer got changed to Rex, R-E-X, because it had a hard start and a hard stop. And it would not easily get confused with normal syllables that uh, us humans say. Uh, so again, this is the software I've been using. It provides menu-controlled interfaces to lots of endpoints, weather stations, uh, lots of brand names. And I'm going to go through a dozen slides real fast that shows all the plugins and uh, scripts that HomeSeer has. This is a list of plugins for lighting. As you can see, I can uh, have different light effects in my office. More lighting menus. Uh, there's analog to digital interfaces for those who are interested in writing their own software. There's energy management, even Tesla menus. There's menus for internet and networking, uh, media networks, phone and texting menus. I used one listed here called pushover to send SMS text messages to my phone for whatever is happening in the house. Um, you can have RF, RFID chips inserted into your body and then the home is much more smart knowing where you're walking around uh, due to sensors. This is much better than having 40 motion sensors around the house. Uh, it provides, you know, music control, window shade control, everything that you want to customize, just like the electric seat in the driver's position of a car. It knows what to do once you walk in a room. Uh, there's robotics, there's Tesla vehicles, Land Rover, etc. on Home Seer, uh, lots of security programs, thermostats and uh, home... Uh, uh, venting, um, more. There's uh, utilities for monitoring, monitoring performance. There's weather scripts and menus. And uh, so this is moving on to the actual sensors. I have over 40 sensors in my house. These are little icons of what they look like. In this case, I asked Homesayer for just to show me uh, the motion sensors, a list of those. There are items in my house for monitoring energy and watts. You can, these are what they look like. You can plug your refrigerator into this. Uh, there is weather station on top of the house. It's going to show you the temperature, the rain, the brightness of the sun, the wind. Uh, this is a home series script for Onkyo receivers, for volume up, volume down, inputs, etc. All these can be joined together for voice controls. If this, then that. Uh, these are different examples of Windows, are they open or closed? So the home seer knows not to lower a shade if the window's open because it might be blowing the shade out of position. All of these are for controlling via today Alexa instead of the old home seer, I mean, um, Microsoft voice control. Alexa is much more intelligent. Uh, your command goes out to the internet, it's quickly interpreted correctly and sent back. Even if you're a foreigner and English isn't your first language, Alexa figures it out and gives the correct commands. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, for shades up and down. Samfi motors are being incorporated into uh, Z-Wave and Zigbee endpoint so uh, wireless software. Yes. Lower upper shade. Lowering upper shades. This is an example of the interior shades going up or down depending on the weather. If the sun is bright, let those shades up. Let that sun come in. If the sun goes away behind a cloud, the shades will come down. They will grab onto this iron bar with a magnet rim and keep the heat in the house with reflecting. Uh, so interior shades keep the heat in the house. Uh, in 2004, they were expensive. In 1981, they were super expensive, thousands of dollars. Uh, today, a recent shopping spree, you can get three electronic remote controlled shades for only $1,200. This is an example of the outer shades. Once again, once when, when the sun comes through glass, just like inside your car, on a, even on a winter day, the car is very hot inside. Uh, when the sun comes through glass, it changes its frequency to heat. So if you want to keep cool and the sun is coming in your windows, you should have outside shades that are automatic. Uh, there are menus for remote control. You can uh, any remote controls you have in your house can be memorized by Home Seer, and then uh, they can be the endpoints can be controlled by your voice commands. This is a list of lights. There's over uh, probably a hundred of these in my menu, and here we're going to play. A, a voice command. Alexa, blue lights 50%. We're going to brighten up the blue lights. Alexa, blue lights 10%. And they'll fade down. Alexa. Alexa. Uh, this is a menu for controlling outside side shades, if, 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 if. Uh, and then the green ones are, then do this. Another example. Alexa, Alexa. this is the outside. Turn on outside, outside shades. shades. And if you look closely, you'll see sh the weaved outside shades going down. You can still see through them. Alexa, turn off outside shades. Alexa doesn't understand raise and lower. I've put in complaints. Notice the LEDs on the left side of the kitchen that can be changed for every, any mode, any mood you have. Uh, so you have to remember that there's winter and even on a winter day, if you have south facing windows, the sun will is very powerful and will heat your house up. My shades are triggered to uh, go down on the outside if the living room becomes greater than 77 degrees. You can type anything in there you want. The house stays between 72 and 80 degrees all winter long based on my interior shades and outterior in outside shades giving me very good control. Uh, if I have motion in different parts of the house, it can speak that there's motion. Sorry about the misspelling there. Uh, this is a script for if there's motion at the back porch, it's going to say speak. There's motion at back porch. 
It's going to speak the temperatures uh, all the way from minus 20. Every, I've written for every five degrees change. Give me uh, an announcement. This is a uh, scripts that I've written. And this is a bunch of scripts I've written for watts around the house. If anything uh, gets past or below watts, I know when the washing machine is going to start or stop. Uh, many items in the house. I'm going to speak washing machine off or on. And uh, that's based because the washing machine is plugged into an energy watts monitor. This is a script of what happens if someone tells Alexa to turn the movie on. I'm going to turn on lights, turn on the projector, turn on the Onkyo receiver, turn on the subwoofers, and after a period of time, the decorative lights that are in the uh, first couple of minutes will go off as the movie starts. This is uh, speaking rain rate and wind speed. It's interesting to know when the wind is over 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, etc. Uh, this would be the washing machine about to turn off. This is what I see on my iPhone for motion happening in the house. The mini split or, or power, the mini split power is pulling. Uh, I, I can know if it's on in low mode or medium mode or high mode. Uh, though my house has no furnace. It's run on a very small mini split. During the winter, the mini split's rarely over 200 watts heating the whole house. Remember that a hair dryer is 1,500 watts. So uh, here's an example. That's the mini split in the kitchen. This is what it looks like outside. <clears throat> the blades of that fan are turning so slow that you can actually watch them going around. This is an example of knowing that the garage door just went down or up on my iPhone. So we care about the health and indoor air quality of the house. We want to know about weather, room temperatures, brightness of the sun, the dust particles, uh, humidity, energy consumption, energy production from the solar panels on the roof. Uh, this weather station, the graphs on the right are five days of, there's a temperature probe glued to the glass of every window. So the computer knows the temperature of the glass versus the temperature outside and the temperature in the house, this is two days of high, low in the winter. And this is wind down here. So based on the glass temperature, the lumens of the sun's brightness, I know when to control the shades. We want to know the quality of the air uh, so tight homes need to have ERVs, energy recovery ventilators, or HRVs, heat recovery ventilators. Uh, this is a picture of my energy recovery ventilator. It has a thermostat on the wall. It smells the VOCs, volatile organic compounds. That's perfumes, um, uh, oil and grease smells, the CO2 that we breathe out. Uh, Harvard University did a study many years ago when the parts per million of CO2 gets over a thousand, our human brain starts to slow down on its decision-making levels. Uh, and so you can set this uh, to be triggered to bring in fresh air to the house at any parts per million that you want. The picture up in the upper right corner is an ultraviolet light of a specific frequency that kills viruses and bacteria. And as the air is passing through 
this, whether it's in recycle or uh, vent mode, the, uh, the bacteria is being killed by the ultraviolet light. The serve integrates with Alexa voice, so if I'm cooking, I can say, uh, bring in fresh air, because I know I'm going to do that. Or if I'm in the bathroom, I can say the same thing. The ERVs also use MERV-13 air filters, which catch most bacteria, sneezing, uh, carcinogen dust. And speaking of carcinogen dust, this is the dust in the air meter. It's called a PM 2.5 dust meter. This is an international term. Many people in China, even the real estate industry, has uh, the price of your office rental is based on dust meters in the office, and you can charge more if you have clean air. People want clean air. So here you have six buckets of dust that's larger than 10 micro, micro, micrometers. Uh, this is uh, large enough dust for the cilia in your nose to filter out. When the dust gets to one millimeter or less, the dust is so small that it can pass through every membrane in your body. Note that cooking oil and heat creates um, a lot of dust. And these, all these numbers will go into five place digits. When I make popcorn, for example, this triggers the ERV to go into high mode and start bringing in fresh air to clear the house out of the uh, particles. Um, and in reference to carcinogens, even though this dust is small to go through all your membranes, it really depends about being the shape of the endpoints of that dust. If it's very sharp edges like soot, and asbestos, then that's carcinogen. It's about the shape. Uh, this is a, all these things are from uh, Amazon, about $100. This is air quality for VOCs, total VOCs. Again, that's the uh, perfumes, uh, anything that evaporates into the air. We have carbon monoxide carbon dioxide, this is formaldehyde, and this is just a standard air quality index. Uh, these are various ways to monitor radon. At Amazon, this is $160 version 3 of a safety siren, and this is a new version of Safety Siren. These are electronic items that will just measure your radon as uh, once an hour. Um, and then for the remittance of the radon, you have to have a fan on the outside. This is a Fantech model 190. It pulls 87 watts. It's sucking on the outside from this pipe that goes into the ground on the inside of the house. And you can see that uh, there's a pressure difference of just a few pounds, and that's all it takes between underneath the cement slab of my house and the air pressure above the cement slab. Uh, you can buy these kits at Amazon. You can drill the rent a drill and make do all this work yourself for uh, uh, just a few hundred dollars versus having it done, which might cost a thousand. Uh, back to uh, the home seer. This is a Z-Wave monitor on my glass for checking the temperature of the sliding door. And it also sees the lumens that are being hit by the sun outside. And that tells the computer when to raise and lower the shade. Uh, this is a door sensor to know if it's open or closed. That's the old style. This is a new style. It's again that popsicle stick shape. And as the sliding door closes, it's going to match another element on the sliding door and know that the door is closed. The batteries in these popsicle sticks last 10 years. 
uh, motion sensors. We have this style in the corner. There's an older style. This is from 2004. And then we have this one over by my refrigerator. Note the uh, Alexa show model here. The Alexa show will actually show uh, cameras, camera views from outside. Uh, we can have hot, air re hot water recovery uh, in a Department of Energy net zero ready home or a passive house. It is mandatory to have hot water pumps to bring the hot water up to the faucet rather than let two minutes of cold water drain down the pipes. Uh, so with this gothotwater.com, if you have a water tank on the other side of the house, you put this pump in the bathroom or kitchen that's furthest away from your hot water source. You come in the bathroom, you press a doorbell button or a motion sensor, and it's going to start the pump. The hot water is being sucked through the pipes. That cold water will then return through this pipe into the wall and back to the hot water tank. And as soon as the hot water does arrive, a thermometer is going to say, oh, I feel the hot water and it stop, shuts the pump off. Now when I turn on my hot water faucet, I only have a foot of cold water and the hot water is immediately there. So this saves a lot of wasted water. Uh, back to the motion sensors. This one is about 60 bucks. It show, tells the computer if there's motion, how many lumens from the sun, the humidity, the temperature, uh, ultraviolet rays, and any earthquake shaking movement. Uh, the sensors provide research data. Example, I would like to track the temperature infiltrating from winter day through the layers of my house. So I would like to have a thermometer the first couple inches in, six inches in, 12 inches in. This is a wireless sender of the, th of the um, actually watts. This is an infrared simulation picture of how cold dirt on the outside of the foundation is uh, being passed from the heat of the house out into the cold. Uh, you can buy just cheap indoor-outdoor thermometers and put these probes on your windows or refrigerator and see what your house is doing. Uh, does anyone know which rock is going to get hotter in the sun, the black rock or the white rock? In the lower right corner is an infrared picture of my house. You can see that I was in the process of updating the windows to the Alpen Series 9 quadruple pane windows that don't let heat out of the house versus the original 1981 triple pane windows that were letting heat out. There was no smart window. They were just air filled. This window here is both the Alpen window plus the interior solar shade down. There's the weather station on top of the house that's feeding the environmental monitor computer. These are the roller shades that come down outside. Uh, that weather station is wirelessly fed to this console in the house, which goes to the house computer. Um, notice there's silver window sills here. This helps reflect sun into the house in the winter. The sun will hit that silver and reflect light up to the ceiling in the house. Uh, this is Alexa show. I can ask it to show me the front porch, show me the street. Uh, when someone comes to the front door, my smart home gives me a photograph on my iPhone watch from the doorbell camera. Uh, we, we're going to pass through a whole bunch of ways to monitor energy. Uh, this is the mini split on a 24-hour basis on a very cold 5-degree day. You can see that this, it was 
got up to uh, the medium level of 700 watts. In the middle of the day, it came down to minimum and then started increasing. Uh, this is another way you can monitor the improvements you've done to your house. This is a graph from my power company from 1999 to 2015. Uh, I was getting stronger and stronger Microsoft Windows computers, Pentium 1, Pentium 2, Pentium 3. So throughout the years, more and more current was being pulled. Uh, I, but I had the uh, compact fluorescent lights in. On the same side, the blue is the gas I was using to heat the house. This sharp drop in electricity is when the solar panels were turned on in the roof in May of 2006. Notice that the red line keeps dropping because I was changing out the compact fluorescence for new LEDs. And the blue had a dropping trend as I was insulating the house. At this point here, I finally had R55 walls with almost no heat consumption. Normal 2x4 wall is R9 versus 55. Uh, for monitoring power, there's many ways. You can buy these $25 kilowatt things and just plug your TV or laptop into here and read what it says. A uh, standard laptop usually pulls about 17 watts. Your LCD television may pull 80 watts. You can plug in your refrigerator or anything into these things that are Z-Wave controlled and tell Alexa to turn off whatever's plugged into these remote controls. This is sending the watts used to the environmental monitor computer and I can graph out whatever's plugged in here. I can graph out my Z-Wave enabled sockets. These are a bunch of monitor computers, uh, monitor third-party software and hardwares for capability that you can buy on Amazon. We're going to look at, at Sense and Emporia here in a short bit. This is what Sense looks like. It's an, they call it AI-based. There's only two little rings that go around the main inputs of your breaker box that feed the whole house. And they have studied the oscilloscope pictures of all kinds of different appliances. They can identify your electric dryer. They can identify air conditioner. And as these appliances turn on and off, once you start up the sense monitor system, it's going to start creating these circles uh, from one circle at the start to many circles throughout the year. It'll, after many times you plug in an electric car, it's going to actually come up with if you have a Tesla or a Chevy Volt, etc. cetera. Uh, but it's based on how many times things turn on and off to, in order to read the, uh, the identification uh, of a, an oscilloscope pattern. Uh, this is an Emporia version of that. This one has 16 rings that go around the wires of individual circuit breakers. They all report to this box, which wirelessly reports to your mobile phone. You can graph out the usage of whatever you want to look at. You just click on any one of these items that you label, the kitchen bar lights, etc., on the menu of your phone, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's a monitor for your Ream hot water tank. This is what it looks like when you put up a whole bunch of CT rings around the wires. Uh, the mad scientist, this is all kinds of CTs about to be installed. Again, you can get graphs on the Emporia system. Uh, this is a new one from Europe called e Eco Is Me with graph capabilities. It's similar to Sense with only two rings versus a ring per circuit breaker. 
Uh, and this is another one called Home Assistance with a Grafana plug-in. Gives you almost an oscilloscope uh, detail of everything and it'll put everything onto one map. We got a hair dryer, we've got uh, the ERV, we've got um, hmm, bedroom lights. Uh, and this is a graph of a whole month of the electric production on top of the house. And in February of 2021, we certainly know we had a huge snowstorm in Colorado. So uh, we're going to talk about time of use here. Uh, this is another graph of the energy being produced by the solar panels green. The red is uh, from midnight to midnight. This is what's being drawn throughout the night. <clears throat> the blue means I'm going directly from the sun to power up the stuff in the house. And on this particular day, I plugged my electric car in twice. In the evening, this was the movie theater running with all the subwoofers and projector. On the outside of the house, modern homes are going to start getting breakers, uh, I mean uh, batteries. So I have the solar panels are getting cheap enough now to have arrays on your north or east or west side of the house. And this box here runs the array of solar panels on the south side of my house. These charge up a battery that can run the house when the neighborhood electricity goes away. And in the future, when we have time of use rates, which are happening probably next year from Excel, which runs everywhere from Minnesota to New Mexico, uh, I can draw off my batteries during the high price time uh, hours of the day, from example, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. when everybody's running their air conditioners. Um, instead of paying uh, three, three cents a day during the night, uh, these high rate uses might be 25 cents per hour, uh, per kilowatt hour. Uh, also, modern windows of the near future are going to have the capability of producing electricity, just like on your roof. Alpen Windows in Lafayette, Colorado is currently in development of these. They have them installed in um, downtown Boulder. Uh, so we are in the pioneering stage of all these uh, first generation monitors and producers. I look forward to uh, 10 years from now when all of this has been smoothed out and integrated into uh, intelligent uh, one, one unit things. This is a Space Odyssey 2001 movie that came out in 2006. This was my inspiration of talking computers. And then we had the Jetsons with talking computers and robots in 1962, another inspiration. Uh, my dad took our family to the Indian cliff dwellings in Colorado, where the forest ranger taught me as a nine-year-old in 1962 that the Indians dug their homes in the south side of the cliffs where the winter sun would keep them warm. And I thought to myself, well, why don't they build homes with the windows to the south? And finally, we are paying attention to Mother Nature. So Mother Nature, Anasazi Indians combined with the Jetsons is what my house is consisting of. AI will be our personnel valet and serve our every need, artificial intelligence. The AI vision enables a whole new world of possibilities. And Tesla is solving computer vision. It's going to enable our home valets. AI is the future of our transportation. We'll have autonomous driving when AI vision has been conquered.
domestic duty? It's just that housework gets me down. No, Sarie. Rosie cooks. She cleans. And she still finds time to play ball with Elroy. Wow! Right in the basket. Rosie is the ideal maid. Respectful. Even tempered. And does exactly what she's told. Oh, Rosie, you darling, beautiful girl. Afternoon, Miss Judy. Yes, this aluminum encased, battery powered robotic woman is the perfect answer for any modern family. But remember, she's more than a computer driven Jill of all trades. Allow me, sir. Oh, the 1960s. My dream. Domestic <clears throat> duty. So, in the house, artificial intelligence will connect our current reality with the superior awareness of all of the all-knowing house. Uh, our <clears throat> weak human nature, we may see things or not understand things, but AI can explain that very quickly and give us instant gratification. It'll augment our vision. It can provide behind the scenes lead ups to events and uh, it can record all of our senses. Um, it can explain the smells we have. It, uh, it'll uh, give us greater awareness to evolve the human to new productivity quicker than we've ever dreamed of up to this point. AI is going to warn us about the passive house level, uh, I mean the pH level in water, carcinogens in our air, floating viruses, and it can trigger ultraviolet lights to come on, as you can see in my living room, uh, and it can tr trigger HEPA filtering of viruses in the air. Uh, it's the merging of current technologies again. Our walls this is a uh, Space Odyssey 2001. There are no wall, more uh, light sockets and things like that. Everything just glows. The floor glows, the walls glow, the ceiling glow. Um, and that's going to be capable from organic LED materials. There's no more need for old-fashioned light sockets and switches. Uh, the light color can be changed to uh, improve our health. There is actually research going on for specific frequencies of white that affect uh, plant life and uh, life in general. AI will monitor the house's senses, the vision, the smells, the sound, the feel, the taste. Um, just like a dog can smell all these things, it can smell the cancer in people and sick people. So future sensors will make us aware of our health concerns. AI will keep us stimulated to continuous education and art culture. It will be our green thumb for keeping our plants optimized for growing food. Uh, AI sensors in our floors will sense us walking and prevent hazards of falls. And for example, tripping down the stairs, it'll give us announcement. It can flash lights and sound as my house does today. Uh, many ideas. Um, and then in the near future, we have Neuralink created by Elon Musk that can be integrated into our brains, as been demonstrated on YouTubes already, with uh, monkeys playing uh, video games with not even their hands. They've learned just to run the video games from their thinking. Um, so data will uh, correct our human negatives, our false perceptions, our partial truths, eliminate myths, eliminate lies, prevent thinking of stereotypes. Uh, it'll stop abuse against others because of just explaining and the, uh, our higher educational properties. It'll promote calmness, healthy eating, focus our attention on productivity, arts, exercise instead of violence. It'll help us remain from even focusing on our stomachs of being hungry. It'll be our personal valet and serve our every need. It can even decrease our insurance costs from our greater awareness. Uh, in 1775, our first post offices had inspector services to prevent people mailing 
uh, fraud to people's houses. Uh, in the 1990s, the internet was in, in, um, introduced, but had no inspector service. In the 2100s, I hope that artificial intelligence returns the inspector service that uh, <clears throat> um, the uh, bad folks are always uh, causing havoc to today's internet. Um, AI has uh, very many times has adjectives of sentience, sem sapience, uh, self-awareness, and consciousness. That's the inspector's badge way back in 1775. And then we got to think about more science fiction, the three laws of robotics from the year 2058 from Isaac Asimov. First law, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to, become, uh, to come to harm. Second law, a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Third law, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. And John Avenson, Internet of Things, 21st Century, the Human Directive, get used to it, everybody. Uh, the merging of technologies is about to happen. Sensors and IoT of the house, cars, streets, feeding input of everything. Artificial intelligence is gathering sensor data and making sense of it for our own safety and health. The neural link in our head, it's like listening to earbuds. When someone's talking, it sounds like it's in the center of your head. It's going to bypass our eyes, which are slow to uh, recognize, be recognized by the brain. If you're driving and you need to hit the brakes, you're missing a half second to three quarters of a second in time between what your eyes see and hitting the brakes. And our ears for fast communication, uh, just thinking from one human to the next. So, how do we get there? Action to the dreamers and doers, passing on our stories and knowledge to young people is so important to move the needle to a brighter future. We need a housing revolution. The houses we buy are crap. The clothes and the food we buy are crap. Our city designs are crap. Our electrical grid is crap. Artificial intelligence will recognize and enhance all of these products so much quicker for our factories. There are so many opportunities to improve the world. All the first principles of meaningful designs mentioned up till now need the next step of evolution growing on the shoulders of our pioneers. So create awesome game-changing startup companies that can change the current archaic house design to evolve from our millennial old style of housing and the electrical grid and food, uh, carcinogen, uh, containing processed foods, city designs that came from B uh, BC days. Build real products and change the world and merge all of these one-off specialized products into low-cost, mass-produced, and affordable sense assemblies. AI can solve these things that people want, don't want to do, do uh, want to do, unable to do, and it can prevent us from doing unwanted urges and negativity it can invent what we can't even imagine, which will make advanced leaps and bounds in productivity, just like the personal computer increased our productivity in the 1995s. Um, <clears throat> but we have to stay ahead of our AI future by taking control of the bad side. So we have to uh, be uh, good scholars we can't, as of today, we can't turn off the internet. We're all dependent on it. Tomorrow, we can't turn off artificial intelligence and its awareness. Uh, so moving the di dial to a brighter future, just like modern ships, spaceships, ocean ships, earth ships, all homes should have new codes, ASHRAE and 
uh, engineering codes because uh, the monitors that are monitoring everything are going to affect our appliances. It'll affect the number of people in the building for keeping fresh air, our water usage, our lights, our windows, shades up and down, air quality index, heating and cooling, um, <clears throat> heating, cooling, ventilation, integration, our voice commands. And thank you. This is my contact information. And what do robots think of? Uh, what does John Havenson think of? Uh, once a year since uh, the 90s, there's been the American Solar Energy Society tour of green homes. And I invite everybody to check that out. This is the Colorado version of the T American Solar Energy Society's tour of green homes. It's always the first Saturday of October, and we're always looking for innovative homes. Uh, I recommend everybody order this $6 book from uh, Amazon. It's, it's only 28 pages. It was written by Denver's Channel 7 Mike Nelson Weatherman. Uh, many interesting facts that you haven't uh, heard before. For example, CO2 produced, that was produced by a Ford in 1910 can still be found in the air today. Uh, and that's the end of our presentation. Thank you much.